had a boogie style that no one else could play. He was the top man at his craft. But then his number came up and he was gone with the draft. He's in the army now, a blowing reveille. He's the boogie woogie bugle boy of Company B. They made him blow a bugle for his uncle Sam. It really brought him down because he couldn't. Stand. Born in Los Angeles in 1923, my parents are Japanese farmers who had two daughters, me being their youngest and only son. My parents were farmers, weren't well educated. I remember never having my parents. They were very strict. They taught me how to be hardworking. My father-in-law was the garlic king in Gilroy about the same time, the late 20s and early 30s. My parents and my in-laws were from the southern island of Japan, Kyushu. My two older sisters were good students that played the piano. I mostly remember working a lot and playing sports during my childhood. I lived and grew up on a five-acre farm in Los Angeles. There, I worked up six days a week on the farm, went to church on Saturday. This, I first learned that America had been attacked while doing homework in my room while listening to the radio. I didn't know much about the war and what was going on at the time. My parents were shocked by the announcement of the war. The Great Depression impacted me and my family because we helped supply people with work in our fields and the farm. I played baseball, football for Compton Junior College in 1941 and 42. I played two years in college playing guard on the football team and I missed playing sports while I was in the war. In 1943, I was sent to Camp Shelby in Mississippi to train for the 442nd Regimental Combat Team. Since I was of Japanese ancestry, I could not join any other branch of the United States military. I was with young boys because we were all in the same boat, uh, having been classified as 4C instead of 1A, we were restricted to only the 442nd. After having much training, I was allowed to fight as a soldier in World War II. Colonel Pence was my commanding officer in 1943 when we went to war. In the war, I was given the title squad leader. The training I received was how to learn to use heavy duty guns. I felt like I was not prepared for my first day of battle in 1944. I was scared to death, but toughed it out and then learned a lot. The most memorable experience in the war was in October of 1944, 50 miles from the Jew border. There was an eight-day battle that we took part in to liberate the city of Bruyere. Following that, we had received no change of clothes, were always running, lived in very cold, rainy temperatures. We started out with 4,500 men and ended with less than 2,000. After that battle, we were given a one-day rest, change of clothes, hot food, and then were shipped out to battle again on October 25. We fought the Germans in war, but it was very foggy during this battle. It was in the Bosch Mountains and unable to see because of the heavy fog and the lack of sunlight. The defining moment and best moment of my service in World War II was the day I almost died. It was on my 21st birthday, October 27, 1944, when I was out at battle and a German shot me. My shooter was just a German boy who looked no older than 14. Somehow, and luckily, I didn't get shot. I hope the younger generation doesn't have to go to war. I suggest the younger people should look into specific branches of the military. You should also stay in school and go to college to receive the best education you can. My most important message is to make good use of your time because you have only, you only live once. As I look back at my time in the war, I encourage the younger generation to try and stay away from war. It causes harm to its people, like causing me to have PTSD. The moral of my story is to live every day because tomorrow may never come.